Hello everyone, this is Dr. David. You can call me Margarita. Today we're gonna to do part two of test taking strategies. Make sure you watch part one. I'll make sure to tag it below. Now, remember in part one, we went over the first three test taking strategies. So now we're gonna do strategies four, five, and six. The first one of this group is to eliminate the absolutes. Never, ever, ever, and even though I'm using the, the words never, which is an absolute word, or ever, choose the one that's gonna be always 100% correct or always 100% wrong. For example, nothing in nursing is black or white. So these fluids can help this patient, might not help the other patient. This medication might help this patient or that other patient, or it might not. So nothing in nursing is absolute. So when you see a answer that has an absolute response, more than likely it is incorrect. So always stay away from those responses that make things either 100% legit or 100% not factual. Those will never be the answers. Then for number five, you want to avoid dangerous words. For example, always is a dangerous word because again, that makes the answer absolute. So I cannot say, 0.9% normal saline will always work for the CHF patient at 150 miles an hour because it's not true. That's actually gonna put them into fluid overload. So all those words that will make it absolutely stay away from, those are the dangerous words, okay? Here's a summary of what we just reviewed. As you read each answer option, look for absolute words and eliminate that option. Some of these words that are dangerous include all, always, every, must, none, never, and only. In the following slide, you have this question. And make sure you incorporate the test taking strategies from part one of this video series. So read this question. This timer is set for 20 seconds in order for you to make sure you understand what they're asking you. So here you have the choices, A, B, C, and D. So now that you have taken 20 plus seconds to read the question in the previous slide, now I want you to look through the answers and see. Do you see any absolute words? So if we review the choices, A, remove toys with sharp edges from the child's toy box. I do not see any absolute words. B, allow the child to play with toys only if a parent is present. Only is an absolute word. C, place a helmet and elbow pads on the child every day. Every is an absolute word. D, allow the child to play indoors only only is an absolute word. So based on our test taking strategy, we are going to eliminate the options that contain absolute words, which include two and four, as well as three. Okay, then you wanna watch out for your umbrella answer. So I get this question a lot. What is an umbrella answer? An umbrella answer is an answer that basically has all of the other answers in one. A particular example that I always use is a patient that's coming into the hospital, an 89 year old female that's coming in and no one knows what their status is in terms of do not resuscitate, do they want CPR, do they want to be vented? So the nurse is trying to figure out how she's gonna get this information. So some of the choices that I gave was, one, ask the power of attorney, two, look at the patient's chart to see if there's a DNR form, three, call the funeral home to see what the patient's wishes are, or four, 
check the patient's living will. Now, all of those, all of those answers seem right with the exception of the funeral home one, but it's something that can be done in the hospital when we have no other choice of finding out anything about a patient. Also, the power of attorney is a good one. Checking the chart to see if there's a DNR form, either from current admission or past admissions that they might have a copy of, especially in the computer systems that, that the hospitals have nowadays. However, what is an umbrella answer here? Well, the umbrella answer will be the living will, because in the living will, it will tell you who the power of attorney is, what are the patient's wishes, funeral home that they may wish to, to be sent to, as well as their DNR or resuscitation status. Do they want to be resuscitated or not? So that is an example of an umbrella answer. So it basically has all of the other answers in it. So, so here you have a summary of what we went over regarding umbrella answers. When answering a question, if you note that more than one option appears to be correct, look for the umbrella option that is also known as the comprehensive option. The umbrella option is one that is a general statement and may contain the ideas of the other options within it. If you see one of these, that is the correct answer. In question number two, you will see this in action. A nurse from the emergency room receives a telephone call from the emergency medical services, EMS indicating that they are on the way to the hospital with several victims suffering from cold exposure after surviving a plane crash. The initial nursing action of the emergency nurse is which of the following? Remember to incorporate the test taking strategies from part one. Here you have the choices for question number two. A. Supply the trauma room with bottles of sterile water and normal saline. B. Call the laundry department and ask the department to send as many warm blankets as possible to the emergency room. C. Call the nursing supervisor to activate the agency disaster plan. Or D. Call the intensive care unit to request that the nurses be sent to the emergency room. The test taking strategy here is to look for the comprehensive option. In reviewing the choices of A, B, C, and D, option three is the umbrella option because activating the agency disaster plan will ensure that the interventions in options one, which is to supply the trauma room with bottles of sterile water and normal saline, option two, to call the laundry department and ask them to send as many warm blankets as possible to the emergency room, and option four, to call the intensive care unit to request that the nurses be sent to the emergency room. All of those things will be activated if you choose option three, which is calling the nursing supervisor to activate the agency disaster plan. This is the umbrella option. So I hope that this video was of use to you. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share this video. Any comments that you may have, put it down below. I will be making a part three of test taking strategies, so look out for that. And remember that in my website, drregisterednurse.com, I have quizzes as well as NCLEX questions. There's different tabs for each. Each of the quizzes pertain to the videos that I do, and there's an NCLEX tab that has specifically NCLEX questions that I have created. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I wish you a great rest of your week. Bye.